Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Palm Tree Sports, brought to you by yours truly, Corey Pujols, your host, and uh, also brought to you by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, of course. And, guys, we're going to go ahead and get things started off with college football today. Um, Obviously, we got a lot of games still going on, so that's why we're going to go ahead and lead with that. I'm going to go a little bit backwards. I'm going to start with the games that are already finished. The Florida's still playing Georgia right now, and there's a lot going on. If you're watching that game, you know what I mean. Okay, so we're going to get into a little bit of all of that, but I also have the game on right now, so um, I will give you a couple of play-by-plays to, to kind of keep it flowing as we get through the nature of this college football game day Saturday we had. So the first bit of information we're going to start with is we're going to start with Miami. They were the lowest scoring team uh, so far um, out of the two teams that played, which would be obviously Miami and Florida State. And with that being said, those two teams will be playing each other next week, which is the other reason why I'm leading off with these two. So, Miami, they beat Virginia Tech by the hair of their chinny-chin-chin, 14-12, all right? And overtime, no less. So, guys, um, I know you're missing your starting quarterback. Garcia was enough to lift you guys over, right, over Virginia. Now, Virginia is not necessarily, you know, you know, the best team in college football. You know, they're not anybody spectacular this year. So, with that being said, let this be a confidence booster, all right? The last couple of games have been some struggles for you guys. have been, you know all over the place as far as the content of football that you guys are putting out right now down in South Miami. So, you know, what you gonna, you guys are definitely want to use it as a momentum builder, especially going into the game against Florida State. And you know that's never going to be an easy game, especially since, you know, we're both recruiting out of the same state along with the, with, uh, the University of Florida. So there's a lot, you know, there's just – there's so much uh, going on there as far as, you know, who's going to be effective and where they're going to be effective at. Right now, sliding over to the Noel side of things, they look like the better team. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they definitely have the better quarterback of the two uh, teams. And with that being said, you got to look at the rest of the roster. And the rest of the roster has been put, playing very well for Florida State recently. Uh, they had a big win today over Georgia Tech, 41-16. And that's, that's what happens when, when all phases of the game are are, are being played properly, right? You know, you guys are playing good defense, only holding the team to 16 points. Um, you guys are playing great offense, right? Allow, uh, you know, being able to score 41. And especially against the Georgia Tech team, which, you know, uh, you guys have, have a tradition of having a, a, a hard game with them, you know? And I don't mean necessarily that it's that's a hard game for you guys to win, but more specifically that it's always a gutsy game, you know? So with that being said, um, good job taking care of Georgia Tech. Again, you guys have Miami up next, so that, you know, surrounds next week is going to be Florida State Miami right you know how is that going to um how is that going to play out who's going to win and who's going to have the inside track on recruiting right from that standpoint of when you have people who are on the fence about what well, do I go to Miami do I go to Florida State you know yada 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 with that also being said the University of Florida also recruits you know a lot within the state of Florida as well so you know a lot of recruits who may not go to Florida may go across street to Florida State and that, that's something that has happened, you know, and it, I'm not saying that it happens, you know, all the time, it doesn't, but it has happened, so with that being said, though, uh, let's go ahead and move on to what's going on with the Gators, now, as I'm watching the game, Georgia just got the ball back, they got away with a hold, all right, why the refs didn't call it, I'm not sure, but that'll be the first segment into what's going on with this game, the refs have been very, very much so in the bag of Georgia, why, I'm not sure, they're already the number one team in the country, they don't need any more help, The game is being played in Jacksonville. Why is there bias being shown? I'm not sure. I'm not usually going to come on here and complain about refs. Not usually, but in this case, I will due to the fact that there have been multiple dirty hits on my starting quarterback, Anthony Richardson, who is also probably the best player on our team, okay? So when your best player is taking, you know, dirty hits out of bounds, I saw the hit. The hit was low and it was late Um, on the intentional grounding call. The whistle was, uh, he not the whistle, but the ball had already been let go of, and the 
the defensive end still sacked the quarter, or not sacked, but still tackled the quarterback after the ball had been released. Uh, look at that interception by Amari Bernie. Uh, Gators pick Amari Bernie showing up big. Um, there's a penalty. I'm not sure what the penalty is going to be for. It was late. I think they're coming. I think they're going to make up something right now, guys. Hang on with me a second. I think they're about to make up something on Florida to keep Georgia with the ball because it looks like they're they're aiming at Florida. Um, let, let's see right here. Let's see. It, it, the, they're in the huddle right now. So while they're in the huddle, just keep in mind, as I was speaking about this, right, the refs have been blowing calls all game. So you had the two late hits right there. You had the hold that they just missed earlier. There was another big hold that they missed before. Uh, between what I've seen and what I've been hearing from, you know, obviously the chatter, there's been about four or five big calls that have been blown. Now, the um, late hit on the quarterback from when the – uh, the, the head coach for Georgia, um, Kirby Smart, took a timeout. Um, that's nothing you can do about that, obviously. His player just made a very bad call. Um, they just called a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, because Amari Bernie fell fell over the receiver. Is that what they're calling here? So Amari Bernie made the interception. It was a phenomenal interception. He had the layout to get it. The ball was slightly underthrown. He oh the 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 so they're calling the block on Rashard Torrance. Um they're calling the block on Rashard Torrance uh that not Rashard Torrance but Torrance had on the receiver a penalty. So that's what happened. That's the nature of that penalty right there. So much like that penalty, there's been a, a, quite a few of those, but it didn't negate the interception. So the Gators have the ball now moving. I think they're slightly beyond their side of the field on midfield or before midfield. My apologies there. So back into the rest of the, the details about this Gator game that seems to be unfolding rather interesting in the last quarter or so let's just call it the quarter because so at half right at the half it was 28-3 all right so it's 28-3 at half it doesn't look like the Gators are going to score an offensive touchdown this game at all okay and it's not because necessarily the play calling or there's just a few things that are still being worked out in the you know first year head coach of Billy Napier and also when you have Anthony Richardson this this gifted young man who is like a 16 year old with a Porsche right or Ferrari whatever car you want to insert there with that being said He's playing pretty well right now. He's playing pretty well right now. Score is 28-13. Gators just got the ball back, okay? So, whatever Billy Napier said at halftime, whatever they're focused on doing, they're doing it right now, and and it, it's starting to, to shift a little bit. There's a little bit of shifting going on right now in the game, so that's a beautiful thing. Uh, the Gators, in the first half, were not able to generate any offense. That is not the case here. They have generated... Uh, what is it, five first downs so far, I think it is now, and whereas they only generated one in the first half. So that's a big deal. They were also not moving the ball on the ground, and they are moving the ball on the ground now. Uh, Travis Etienne or, uh, scored the first touchdown for the Gators today, in fact. So that's that's a, a beautiful sign against the number one ranked Georgia, who usually traditionally very good at running, uh, stopping the run and running the ball effectively down their opponents. So, see, the thing about it is this game, which – for a lot of Gator fans, for a lot of Georgia fans, is recognized out of whoever wins this game is going to win the East. This is usually what happens, right? In this case, the team who has the best rushing attack wins this game. I think over 90% of the times that the University of Florida, University of Georgia has played each other, the team with more rushing yards won, period. I, I, I mean, and the percentile is ridiculous. So odds are, if you, win the, if you run the rushing attack, all right. If you can win with your rushing attack, you will most likely win the ball game. So that's the last step as far as the Gators are concerned. Uh, very pleased to see what they're doing here in the second half. Let's see if they can sustain it. Again, offense is back on the field. Four minutes, 27 seconds to go in the third. And the Gators have more than doubled the amount of yards that Georgia's had in this quarter. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and slide into a quick break. Once I get back, we're going to go ahead and talk uh, hockey. We're going to talk some basketball real quick and go ahead and get those guys out of the way because sadly there's going to be a bit of a roast going on for these uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers later, and it's going to have to be a little bit worse than what it was last week. So we'll go ahead and get into that next up here on IE Sports Radio. For Palm Tree Sports, I am Corey Pujols, your host, and I will be back in a few moments right after this brief message.
What's up, sports fans? Are you looking for the latest on Northern California sports? Then take a trip out west with me, your host, Gina G, on Reppin' the NorCal Sports, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'll be bringing it to you all the way live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's always a packed show. I'll bring you everything Dynastic 49ers, the bite of the San Jose Sharks, torture of the San Francisco Giants, the Golden State Warriors that we still believe. Then take you across the bay to the rise and grind of the Oakland A's. I've got you covered on college ball from the Cal Bears to the Stanford Cardinal so that no matter what, repping in NorCal sports is always repping the bay. So if you bleed red and gold or you're looking to keep an eye out west in them thar hills, don't miss me, Gina G, on repping in NorCal sports. Catch me every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific. 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'll have your fandom revved harder than a trio of Defenders Garden Stephen Curry before his buzzer beater is Gucci. to another episode of Palm Tree Sports brought to you by IE Sports Radio. I am your host, Corey Pujols. And just before I left you guys, we were just talking about how there was a shift going on, right? Gators just scored. Big touchdown. Xavier Henderson, safety from Georgia, misplayed the ball, paid for it. 28-20 Georgia. Now, let's go ahead and get on to what uh, what I mentioned before the break that we were going to get into, which is first off, the lightning, okay? So this is a whole paradox for me. I, I don't know what's going on with our boys, okay? I'm not sure what's going on with our boys in blue, but I can tell you this much. Uh, they're given 50% of what they have. See, they are 4-4, four and four, okay? And it's been win-loss, 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 win-loss every game, okay? I can't make this up. There's they, they, They're not putting a trend together. There's no two losses in a row, two wins in a row. What does that tell me? One you know, one night they're on, one night they're off. What's going on? I'm not sure. I obviously the team is not the same team that it was last year. It's not the same team that won the Stanley Cup. We expect that. But we still have good coaching. We still have good players. We know what we're doing. We know how to play this game. Let's try to figure it out, right, guys? We're still stuck in our who are we stage, you know, for hockey. You know, are, are we, you know, are we going to play great defense this year? Are we going to have tremendous scoring? What are we going to do? What can we put on the table? Yeah, we can score five goals, but we can also score one, you know? So we have to find a meeting. We have to find a way to score enough and play good defense at the same time. That way we can be successful in more games than not, right? Because this win-loss, win-loss, win-loss trend is not going to get us back to the playoffs. It's not going to get us back to a Stanley Cup. And it's, I'm no, you know, our team isn't satisfied with, I know they're not happy with the way we're playing hockey right now. So, you know, it just, you got to ask yourself, guys, you know, who are we and what do we want to do? What do we want to accomplish? What are we trying to get to at the end of the day? And and who do we want to be as, as a team on the ice, right? The other teams already know that we can play. We already know that we can play. We just got to go out there and do it, right? So, uh, again, obviously, good defense is going to be the key. And that's something that we've been known for in the past. So hopefully, again, that's something that we can ramp up. Uh, there's not really much going on right now because obviously there's a bit of a, a break right now for the for, for hockey, uh, or for our team specifically. We don't play the Senators until Tuesday is the point that I'm getting at. My apologies. But with that being said, we can beat the Senators, all right? Listen, we we have – we lost the last game 2-1 to one to the Sharks, right? So just like baseball, everybody knows how I feel about run-run ball games. One-score ball games are the same thing, right? you got to win those. This could easily be a 5-3 and three instead of a 4-4, four and four, right? And 
it, it's it's games like that in situations like that that show the difference in teams that are going to make the playoffs are going to go make deep runs into the 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 uh, the, the playoffs and that are going to be gunning for a Stanley Cup. That's the idea here, right? So, you know, and again, as a, as a team and a franchise that's accustomed to being successful, especially on the ice, where a lot of teams may not expect us to be in sunny Tampa, Florida, our bolts shine very brightly in the hockey world. They do. They know our team. They know where we're at. So, guys, you know, don't worry about – don't worry about – any of that existential stuff, right, guys? Let's play sound defense. Let's do what we do. Let's score, right? And let's win us some more games. And let's win these one score ball games, right? Puck games, to be literally correct there. Uh, now, that's it for the Lightning. Again, we got the Senators on Tuesday, so that'll be a tall tale sign of where this team is going to be headed for the for the next, you know, couple of games, in my opinion, especially having some, some time off, right? So that that's always helpful, getting some rest. Uh, on to basketball now. Obviously, the Rays aren't playing baseball right now. The World Series just started yesterday, and boy, was it a game. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, it was a good game. Uh, can't wait to see the next one. Uh, I tell you, man, I can't wait to see my boys – you know, playing, playing for a World Series and actually winning. You know, that'll be the day. Can't wait for that. Now, in basketball, we're going to cover the Heat and the Magic, of course, as you guys know. Uh, that's all we got about here. So, with, with that, we're going to start with the Heat first, actually. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and start with the Heat first. There's a little bit more upside on the Magic right now because, obviously, you know, you're not, nobody's really expecting of them uh, at, at this moment with the young team that they do have. But the Heat, you know, they started off 2-4. and four. I think they would want to flip that record around, especially with the talent that they have on the team. Next up, they play the Kings. The Kings are 0-4, okay, guys? So, look, that's it's not like that's supposed to be a close ball game or anything like that. That's another young team that's out there trying to figure out who they are and what they want to do as far as the offensive side of the ball is concerned. They do not score uh, as many points as some of these other teams do out here, obviously, like the Warriors, um, Celtics, some of these other teams that are, are living above 100 points a game, right? With that as well, though, uh, they play the Warriors – after the Kings, and I bring that up because obviously that's an example of what I mean by great shooting, great offense. Now you can tell me, hey, they just won that, you know, the World, uh, the World Series, Jesus Christ, <laughs> NBA National Championship. So uh, I, I get that, you know, but at the same time, that's the model. That's what you now obviously you can't duplicate Steph Curry, but what you can do is you can work your players into the fold to understand their jobs a little bit better, right? Because that's really what you know, what they're lacking on that team is, is, is tighter defense and better shooting. That's what it comes down to for Miami right now. So, you know, uh, you got to give me a game against the Kings, get you to three and four, right? Then you got the Warriors after that, who's the same team that gave you your last loss. Why don't you go in there and get a win, right? Shake things up, you know, uh, make it so that people aren't, uh, you know, so uh, just used to what you're doing for all intents and purposes, right? Go out there, shock the world, beat the Warriors, do something that maybe everybody wasn't expecting you guys to do, right? Because I guarantee when that game comes on, they're going to be picking Warriors, Warriors, Warriors. Uh, I like Miami. You know, again, I, I like the roster, Tyler Hero, you know, JV, the boys, all of them, all right? Uh, I, I don't want to say that they're missing a piece right now because I don't think that they are. But for all intents and purposes, the way the Lakers team is playing right now, you know, maybe, maybe make a move for something they got over there, you know, some, some guy that, you know, was in Miami before, because the bottom line is this, look guys, LeBron can't stay in, in LA, you know, so why not, you know, Miami, Cleveland are probably going to be on his radar, it'd be great to see him in Miami again, it really would, honestly, it would, now, will it happen, <laughs> probably not, but I'm just saying guys, the Lakers, they need, they should trade him. They should trade LeBron because they're not doing him any justice, and this is a spot that he could come to. Now, that's a fairy tale. But what's not a fairy tale is beating the Warriors. So let's focus on that. Beat the Warriors next time. They beat you guys handily 13 points, 123, 110 last time. So maybe get a little payback there. Let's go squeak on to the Magic. Now, the Magic have a little bit more upside, right? Because nobody's expecting much of anything from the team. Seems very, very young. I believe the kid's name is Blancho or something like that. I, I, I apologize if I messed his name up. Kid's playing amazing basketball. Scored 27 points in the first win that they had of the season against the Hornets. Hornets are 2-3 and three on the season. Again, Orlando's got their first win, putting them 1-5 on the season. 113-93, to 93, so that's about a 20-point differential. That's good. That's good, all right? And it's also the first time, okay, that Orlando held the team under 100 points scoring, all right? 
two good signs right there. You got over 100. You kept the team from getting to 100. In football, the threshold is about 20, 24 points, right? Great teams tend to score a little bit more than 24 points while holding the other team to less than 24 points. That's true in history for sports, guys. And I mean that for, for, the, for football, college football specifically. That's the differential. 24 points is about it. 20 to 24 points. Uh, in basketball, about 20 points. 20 points is a blowout, right? That's what we call a blowout uh, at that point. So, you know, you guys scored your first blowout of the season as well. And, again, you got the young man, Blancho, looking really good in there. I, 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 again, I believe that's his name. I, I really hope I didn't mess it up. But next up, you guys got the Mavs, right? So, Luka Magic. And you know what that guy is going to do. He's... You know, he's going to try to put up a 30-point triple-double on you guys, all right? So you're going to have to play good defense. You're going to have to shut him down. He has pieces around him, sure. He is the catalyst of that team, period, all right? Period, the end. You got to shut him down. You got to find him. We got to double him. You got to keep him. You got to make him make bad choices, right? Make him make bad choices. He's young, okay? He can learn, right? So give him something to learn from. Obviously, you guys are young, too, so that means you got to be tenacious, all right? Tenacity will be key in that game. And you can win the game, of course. You know, you just got to play good defense and you got to play good offense. You definitely have to get, you definitely have to score over 100 points, on, you know, to beat the Maps. That much, I believe. So that should be, that should be the goal. That should be the move. And hopefully it is. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take one more break. And then when we get back, we'll go ahead and get into this NFL spotlight that we have right now. And of course, unfortunately for the Tempe Buccaneers, it'll be a roast. It'll be another roast session. So. Uh, unfortunately, these are things that we have to do, though, right? You know, especially as fans, diehards, you know, for the teams that we love. Hard love sometimes is going to be key. So, uh, one more break, and we'll be right back at you with a little bit more Palm Tree Sports. Again, I am your host, Corey Pujols, and this is brought to you by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. to a great game on USRN, but then the Wi-Fi crashed in the final seconds? Or do you simply want to listen to the best calls we hear at USRN have to offer? Well, then you need to go check out our Audio Boom page. It holds a collection of our best calls that you don't want to miss. How do I get there, you ask? You can download the Audio Boom app and look up Ultimate Sports Radio, or simply go to audiobook.com slash ultimate sports radio. And as always, thanks for listening and making USRN one of the most talked about sports networks on Mixler.com. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to the ninth episode of Palm Tree Sports, hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols, and of course brought to you by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Alright guys, NFL time, NFL time, NFL time, NFL time. Now... I say this a lot. For those who don't know, I live very close to the stadium. I am a hardcore Buccaneer fan. All right? I love my Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I do jump out of my seat. All right? I work the Super Bowl event. Like, I 
I yell, I scream, I'm passionate, just like everybody else, okay? This has been truly three of the hardest weeks of losses as a Bucks fan. And I say that to a couple of points. When we had Jameis, we were waiting for the upside, but we got acquainted with the kind of player he was early on. We became accustomed to him. Okay, that happens when you have a quarterback for a few years. Enter Tom Brady. I was a Tom Brady fan pretty much from the first game that he played, the first Super Bowl he played, the first time I, I got to nationally lay my eyes on him as a kid. I was playing against the Rams. I've told this story before, of course. And, you know, the Rams, they, they beat up on Tampa Bay back in the day. So I wasn't a huge fan of the Rams. Right? Wasn't the biggest fan. So obviously I'm gonna pick against them. And Tom Brady wins that Super Bowl. A couple years later he comes back, he plays uh the Eagles and the or it was I believe it's Carolina first and then the Eagles and you know, Carolina is a division rival. I don't like Carolina. So I'm gonna, you know, root for Brady. Following year, plays against the Eagles. Not an Eagles fan. You know, obviously not an Eagles fan. Uh the Eagles have done their fair share of destruction in the Tampa Bay or to Tampa Bay in the in the past. And with that being said, I'm going to pick for Brady. So obviously I became a Brady fan on accident. I learned to love the guy and what he was able to bring to the table, being a field general, seeing the whole field and being able to maneuver defenses the way he wanted to. And I'm, I also want to bring one more thing to our attention. The, the, the refs, are they, they're still blowing the game, <laughs> the Gator game. Still blowing it, guys. In any case, with the Bucks, uh, and especially specifically with Tom, watching him evolve through his career, now settling here in Tampa Bay, I, I don't think I've ever seen him play three worse games. And I'm saying that also from the performance. I know his numbers look good. Of course his numbers look good. It's, it's Tom. But there are some of these throws, and it's like he's just shooting into the ground, you know, he's he missed a wide open Mike Evans. Just things that are just seriously uncharacteristic of him and things that you may not ever see him do, you know, ever again. You know, especially with his career winding down the way that it is. There's a lot going on with Tom, and I know it. Let me be the first to tell you, I completely understand. I don't understand the divorce, obviously, for those who recently you know, haven't seen. Uh, him and Giselle got a divorce, you know. And playing football, of course, there's other issues, but there's, it's for them, that's for them. I know it's bothering him, though, and it's noticeable on the field. So, I don't hold Tom 100% responsible. How can I? He's playing really good football, guys, okay? It's not really his fault. I would like to blame Byron Leftwich. Byron, the play calls that you are utilizing, they're not, they're not, getting us anywhere. These quick throws to the outside on receivers, trying to get the safety to come up in the box and do this, that, and third. No, 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 no. It's very simple. Run the ball effectively, all right? Create openings on your short play action fakes, so that way when you set up in a base formation, you can go deep with the receivers without having to use play action. There are levels to this, okay? And you're taking that away from Tom. I, I'm not going to sit here and ever say that I ever really saw Tom do quick outs in New England, all right? Why do I bring up his time in New England? Well, he was very successful there. Why? Well, maybe he was playing his offense and not somebody else's, huh? You know, maybe that's part of the key. And perhaps that's what we need to do is let Tom's run the offense. Huh? The second thing is the defense. If you've watched the Buccaneers play defense recently, you can see that they're not really playing it. Right? You can see that they're not really playing it in, in the other team isn't shooting themselves in the foot. The Gators aren't necessarily doing anything to help, you know, the team. Not creating turnovers. They're getting a few sacks here and there, but, you know, a little bit more would be helpful. Well, guys, you know, just lost Shaq Barrett, so that's going to make it a little bit harder, of course. We still got to play defense, huh? We still got to wrap up. We still got to tackle. And that brings me to Devin White. I'm a huge Devin White fan. Watched the young man in LSU. Saw what he was capable of doing on tape. Thought he was a great pick. He don't look 
like that pick. He don't look like that guy at all. Like that guy that he was, he doesn't look like that guy on that field. Lackadaisical, half-assing it, not giving it his all. Like, is it me? But if I was a little bigger, a little faster, I could play football. I mean, pro football specifically. And I could do a hell of a lot better than that. That's all I'm saying. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way. Now, I know there's a lot that goes into the game, but I love it too. And I can tell you this much. When you love the game, that's not how you run. That's not how you perform. All right? And Devin, being one of the fastest sideline-to-sideline linebackers in the league, played horrifically. All right? So, obviously, there are some some, in, some injuries on the defensive, uh, uh, the defensive cornerback position, of course. You know, a safety position. And... So I get that, you know, I I do, I honestly get that, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the defense just, oh, our stars are out, let's not play, all right, so that's a very big deal, the defense was horrific, all right, Todd Bowles, I don't know what he's got going on with the defensive coordinator position, I I believe there's two co-defensive coordinators, get them out, get them out, and you call your defense, Todd, all right, because you were the defensive coordinator, we were number one in stopping the run, we're not number one in stopping the run because you're the head coach now. You have more responsibility. You have a different set of responsibility. Fortunately, where we are as a team might need you to handle that responsibility since you've been the one handling it up until that point. All right? So that's that for the Bucks. Bright sides for the Bucks. All right? Rashad White looked great. All right? This is no knock on Lenny. Yeah, everybody knows I love Lenny, but unfortunately, Rashad White is outperforming him. All right? If Lenny wants that position back, he's going to have to increase his vision. All right, that seems to be the problem with Leonard, is that he, when he gets the ball in his hands, he looks for contact, and I get it. When you're a truck, you want to hit something. I get it. Trust me, I do. I love it too. But sometimes you could just score, bro. You could just bounce it outside, take the seam, look at the grass. You know, look for the grass. Don't look for the defender. Look for the grass. You know, the grass is g- green is good, right? That's what we say. Green is good. So, Lenny, baby, you got to find the home run ball. And it's not going to be running into the first person with a different color jersey than your own. Okay? So, Rashard White, as far as I'm concerned, should be starting. That guy's been playing really good football. He catched the ball out of the backfield. He showed tremendous vision against the Ravens in that five-point loss. And for the record, guys, just because... um, it did happen, of course. It, for those who got to see the face-off between me and uh, top Ravens fan Scott, shout out Scott, he did great. It was phenomenal. It was a great. That was my first time doing a face-off. It was it was a wonderful experience to be able to uh, represent my team. You know, especially given the nature of the game, right? Thursday night primetime football, if you will. Uh, so that was fun. That was phenomenal. I got to win my first face-off by a point, and you know, I said during that. That face-off, that interview, if you will, that the game would be a five-point game, okay? I said, if I had to take a guess, I think it'd be a five-point game, low scoring. Uh, it's gonna be a, there's, There'll be a late score at the end, but regardless of that score, it'll be a five-point game, and it'll be low scoring. That's exactly what happens, 27-22 game, all right? And unfortunately, the other thing that I said that needed to not happen happened, right? Which was the Ravens controlling time of possession. They are number one running team in the NFL, right? rushing team in the NFL. If you're going to stop the number one rushing team in the NFL, how are you going to do it? Well, you got to keep the time of possession. You got to keep the ball away from them, right? Because when you do that, they can't run the ball, right? Can't run the ball if they don't have it, right? So, fortunately, that's not what happened. I don't really know what to say about this team right now. In my opinion, this team is shot. This team has no belief in itself. They are lacking true confidence, and I mean confidence from the heart, the, co- the type of confidence that you have when you do something consistently, that so consistently that it's second nature to you, right? Uh, the timing between Brady and Evans is off, which is uncharacteristic, and, you know, it's just, <sighs> it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating, guys, to watch this team play football right now, especially with the talent that we have, especially with the talent that we have. With that being said, at this point, uh, we're approaching the middle of the season. We got the Seahawks next in Munich, Germany. Uh, small story about Munich. It's 
uh, it's the birthplace of a, of a tyrant, and it's also uh, one of the, the nicer cities of, of Germany, if you will. I don't mean nicer as they're mean, but I mean uh, from the decoration and the, the aesthetic of the city itself. It's a beautiful city. And, um, yeah, it's it's just... It's, it's, it's frustrating. Oh, my apologies. We have the Rams next, but yeah, the Rams, the NFC West would have been a better way for me to, to summarize that situation. But the Rams, we already know what happened last time we saw the Rams. I'm not excited about that game. The Rams aren't playing tremendous football either, but why would the Bucks get any type of favoritism or love uh, right now under this three-game losing streak, especially losing to who we've lost to, not necessarily including the Rams, but more specifically depleted defenses and teams that are missing personnel? There's no exa- no excuse for it, and going against the Rams, I don't necessarily feel good knowing that our offensive line has been struggling as much as they have, getting ready to go against the best defensive uh, tackle, the defensive lineman in general in the league. Uh, my apologies again for, for getting that, uh, mixing those two weeks up, you guys. But following the Rams, and I uh, we have the Seahawks, I believe it is, but that game specifically I want to talk about, like I mentioned, it, it being in Germany. It would be the first time uh, that Tampa Bay is playing in Germany, so that will be you know, it was first time for any team playing in Germany, but it in general, it's going to be uh, an aesthetic for us that we've never had before, right? Most of the time, our teams, they don't play in exotic places, right? It's If it's either here or there. And so getting to travel to Germany is just going to be one, uh, a beautiful experience for the team, and I hope that they learn a lot from it. I hope that they're able to, you know, obviously get to see all the different sites and all of that, but that'll be something for them, uh, a little traveling, if you will for those who hadn't been to that to that part of Europe. So that's a that's just a wonderful thing for them. Aside from that, we just got to pray that they that they can put something together. Put something together, put some continuity together, something that will stick with us the rest of the season. Something successful, right? You know, whatever that may be. But we we definitely have to find our groove. Uh that's enough for Tampa Bay. On to the Dolphins and the Jags. We'll go ahead and start with the Dolphins first and uh, get this part out of the way because obviously they beat the Steelers. Wasn't a super exciting game, 16-10 ball game, low scoring. Uh, Steelers, I believe, were uh, or not Steelers, but Dolphins got Tua Tungabailoa back, which obviously helps tremendously for the team. Great quarterback when he's healthy. Uh, I can't say enough good stuff about the young man, of course. So just keep him healthy, right, Dolphins? Same thing I get on here say every week. Keep them healthy. Uh, next up, you guys got the Lions. Lions are one and five. All right, they don't look good at all. All right, they're, they're not doing much of anything at the moment. This should be a gimme game for you guys. Okay, gimme game for you guys. Uh, just start stacking those W's, right? Especially in that very tight division in the AFC East. You got the Patriots who aren't specifically playing good football right now, but Bill Belichick is still Bill Belichick. You got the Bills, who. In my opinion, are the best team in the entire NFL. There's nothing we can really do about it. I know the Eagles are undefeated. I know the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. He just got Kadarius Tony, but that's neither here nor there. I think the Bills are the best team. Josh Allen has that offense looking red hot. The defense, they got Vaughn Miller. They have Kyrie Elam, who went to Florida, who just showed how good he's performing as a defensive player, as a rookie. That team, they, it's it's gonna be hard. All right, it's gonna be hard for anybody right now period. That's just how I feel about it. Uh, but Dolphins, you guys have a chance. You guys were the last team to beat them. The only team to beat them this year. So I think you can do it again, of course. Why Why wouldn't I think that? Especially, you know, your division rivals. So, uh, good luck uh, on this game. Obviously, with the Lions, I, I'm pretty sure, again, you know, it's a gimme game. I'm pretty sure you guys will get that win. So it shouldn't be too bad there. Uh, two is back, again, as I mentioned before. That's good can't really complain you know and hopefully everything that the Lions do the Dolphins will be shut down defensively Tua can do his thing it's glad to see him back Jags you guys got the Broncos next both of you guys are two and five what what's going on there I don't know I don't I, I do not know for the life of me you guys spent the most money just under 200,000 or 200 million my bad uh, in the cap I think it was i Try to remember the exact number. It was a lot of money, okay? And you guys are two and five. Why? I don't know. What you guys might want to consider doing is run the ball effectively. Anytime a young team needs to get going, I've always felt 
that, and it's always been more so proven, I think, that when you have a good running back, anything else is possible after that, okay? You got a good offensive line. You got a good running back. It'll help loosen up the defense for your for your quarterback, for your own quarterback. So you don't, we have to call complex plays. Now, at some point, you will have to. There's no way around that. That's the NFL, you know? However, work smarter, not harder, right? So, guys, you guys play the Broncos. Russell is questionable. If he doesn't play, run the ball. Definitely run the ball. Because what are you, what are you worried about on either side? Okay? You tell me. That's the point that I'm making. Guys, you have to play the field. If Russell plays, you still got to run the ball, but you still have to play good defense. You're going to have to play good defense if you want to win the game. All right? The Broncos aren't playing good football. Y'all aren't playing good football. Go out there and get it. Go out there and get the W. That's all I could tell you. Go out and get it. I, I'm not really sure what more can be done for the team, right? Like what more you can do from a, a acquiring uh, veterans or free agents or whatever the case may be. 11-1 is right around the corner, guys. All right, November 1st is right around the corner, and I believe that's the trade deadline. Once that goes up, whatever you have on your roster is what you have. You're going to have to make it work. Jags, if you guys can do anything, do something. If you can't, you got to figure it out with the pieces that you have. And again, it's going to come down to running the ball effectively to set up Trevor uh, Trevor Lawrence so he can have, you know, easy throws, provide one-on-one coverage instead of, you know, two safeties draped all over his receivers all the time. Guys, it seems like a dead horse when I get on here and talk about the Jags, especially at a 2-5 and five record. You guys can beat the Broncos. Go out there and get a win, all right? I, I think that's about it for everything. I don't have any more notes, at least for the Jags or for the Dolphins at the moment. Uh, the Gator game definitely hasn't gotten any better. It's now 42-20, Georgia. Gators have the ball, 11 minutes, 17 seconds left to go. I'm not going to say I expected Florida to win. It would be nice if they could somehow pull it out, but they're going to have to pull out three scores and, you know, again, just under 11 minutes and 17 seconds. So we'll see what happens next. Well, that's been it for me, guys. Uh, again, I'm your host, Corey Pujols for Palm Tree Sports, and it is brought to you by IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Guys, thank you again for joining me on this Saturday, slightly hectic Saturday with, you know, the Gator game still going on where normally it would be. But... I just thank you guys for joining me here on Saturday afternoon. Same place, same time next week. We'll be here, we'll talk, and we'll see what's going on in the sports world then. Until then, my friends, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you next time. Peace. It's IE Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is, your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris.